about connections uh, with some of their members to <clears throat> paramilitarism and the troubles. That's that's granted. You personally, as a teacher, as a school principal, as a person, seem to have a fascination with the Orange Order, don't you? I mean, you you brought the Orange Order into your schools. You've tried to do kind of reconciliation programmes with Orange Order members. We do, and whenever Schomburg House was open, the first people across the threshold that day were people from St Paul's High School, Bestbrook, my school. We do a lot of that in conjunction with Newry High School and Newton Hamilton High School, which we have developed really strong links with in our school. And we have always found when you hold a hand of friendship out, somebody will always will put it back to in, in Northern Ireland. And that's why I think my fascination with the with the Orange Order stems from the fact that the Orange Order appeals to that primeval part of the brain that the GA also appeals to, and it is love of place. So when I talk to David Scott, education officer of the Orange Order, who's a good friend of mine, he will say, you have your GA club that is the most important thing to you. I have my little lodge and my little band, and around that is where my life is centred. I get that and I understand that. And, you know, as, as I've said before, once we understand that the Orange Order walks to give witness to its sincere belief in the Reformed faith, I think then you can understand an awful lot of the other things around the Orange Order. So, yes, a, um, a much maligned organisation, and again, like the GA, if people can pick things out of the Orange Order, that you're not allowed to marry a Catholic, and you're not allowed to go to a Catholic place of worship. I have been to plenty of funerals, and I have sat beside many members of the Orange Order, mm. decent, respectable people who will do the right thing. And I think that in a, in a fair wind, we would see the Orange Order getting away, doing away with that. But let's not focus on those things. Focus also on the fantastic work that the Orange Order does in its its own community, with its halls and with its love of place as well, which is so important in this very complex world. What do you say to those uh, nationalists <clears throat> who are texting who say the Orange Order is, an, is a sectarian organisation? I would say the same to them as the people who would say that the GA is a sectarian organisation. Um, we have to respect all of the culture that exists in Northern Ireland and all of how people view this world that we are in. And for an awful lot of families, the Orange Order is something that goes right through their family and the wearing of the sash. There's a particular ritual and a rite involved with that. And walking in your local area behind your local band is very important. The GAA is never going to be get involved in that sort of rhetoric, uh, which would be condemning other organisations. You don't you know, regard the Orange Order as sectarian? I don't, because I think that it's, you know, it, it's an organisation that appeals to the same type of values that the GAA does. And unless we respect them, how are we ever going to get the Orange Order and, and the people who value the Orange Order to respect us? On this point about reaching out to unionists, uh, one of our listeners, no name unfortunately on this text, but one of our listeners <clears throat> references um, Rule 1.2 uh, in the basic aims of the organisation to support a united Ireland. How can a unionist support that basic aim within the GAA if they're still to be a unionist? Well, I remember back whenever Tyrone were building its, its uh, centre of excellence in Garavaghi and w along one of the walls they had a, a whole mural of people from Tyrone who had distinguished themselves and they felt that there was something missing which was those Tyrone people who had gone and fought in the two world wars. So they reached out to the Royal British Legion in Oma mm. and they went and they were invited to it and they went in. I remember speaking to Mark Conway uh, who, who was the person who went and when he went in he said he couldn't get over everything that was around, you know, the there was all sorts of Union flags, historical ones. There was pictures of Queen Elizabeth, pictures of the royal family, all of that. And he was almost taken aback by the amount of iconography that was there. And then he stopped and he thought, I am in a premises belonging to the Royal British Legion. The clue is in the title, Royal British. They have a right to do that. Now, look at the name of our association. We are the Gaelic Athletic Association. We were formed to try and save Gaelic Indigenous Games in a colonial era whenever we people wanted us to be English. Mm. And it is that really, that is very easy to explain in the South, where identity is not contested. But in the North, in Northern Ireland, identity is contested. So to say that you are Gaelic, to say that you, you know, your flag is the tricolour, your anthem is the Irish accent, is, is, is the Irish anthem, is something which can cause rancour in Northern Ireland. But what we would say is that Again, go back to rule one, uh, one, two. We are anti-sectarian, anti-racist and non-party political. And go back to the taking the page out of the Bible. Uh, don't judge us on that. Judge us on the million other things and speak to those people from the Protestant community who, sp who play for East Belfast and speak for all of those people from the unionist community who are involved in our social yes. have never. I, I get that, but do you, do you not privately wish some of these rules would go away? Because it sounds like 
And I talk to people in the Orange Order where this is the case too, where they say, yeah, I know we've got that rule, but we do this, right? Practically, it's a different kind of personal-based response. You've got Rule 2.1b, which requires all members to support and work for the basic aim of United Ireland. All members are, are called to do so under that rule. Well, the basic aim of the association is the strengthening of the 32-county ideal, which is we talk. Now, what is the 32-county ideal? It's looking at things from the perspective of 32 counties in exactly the same way as the Orange Order does, because they have the Grand Lodge of Ireland. So on the our rules, any member of the Orange Order would be very welcome. Any member of any organisation is welcome. We do not discriminate on the our rules of inclusion. Now, William, this is important. And it's a wee bit the same. It's interesting what you say about the, the orange man saying that I wish those rules would go away. It would certainly make this interview a lot easier. Mm. But um, You can't make them go away, personally. Yeah, I think it would cause such a debate within the association because those rules are important whenever you remember what our history is. Remember what the history of the GA is. Yes. And how, in many respects, we have been used as a battering ram when the British government wanted to send a message out to nationalists. I did it through the GA, for example, in Bloody Sunday in, in Croke Park and in a game between between uh, uh, Dublin and Tipperary, the Black and Tans came in and murdered 14 people in our main uh, stadium. Michael Hogan, it's, uh, the, our main stand is named after him. Two children, one age 11, one age 10, right up to murder of Sean Brown, for example, in 1997. And that takes it right. Jerry Devlin, Fergal McCusker, Patsy Kelly, you know, the, the, the occupation of Cross McGlenn, uh, a GAA ground by the British Army, the occupation of Casement Park by the British Army. All of these things are part of our history. And for us growing up, remember this yeah. important point. The GAA was there in South Armagh at a time when our area was being occupied by the British Army, Irish people being occupied by the British Army to say, if you play our games, you can be Irish, you can have your Irish identity in a non-violent and positive and progressive way without ever having to do anything else. And I will always make the argument that the GA took more, hundreds of young lads away from violence by me being one of them, by if you could play the games, you could express your Irish identity there. So that story has never properly been, 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 uh, been written about the GA and I think that's part of what I have to do today. In terms of inclusion, uh, we also have a more ethnically diverse society here. Uh, we have more black and brown people. Um, not as many as you might find, incidentally, in other parts of the world. And there are some controversies around people who are opposed to immigration and all kinds of things. But we, we have an increasingly ethnically diverse society. And yet you have, what, eight GAA grants named after a racist and an anti-Semite, John Mitchell, who to his dying day uh, was a supporter of slavery, a supporter of the Confederate States when he was in the United States. How, how can you expect a, a black or brown person, or indeed someone who's opposed to slavery on principle, or the enslavement of, of other people, and regards that as it is, as a moral disgrace, um, to look up and see John Mitchell's name? Yeah, well, coming down here, I came through Wellington Place and then up Chichester Street, Arthur Chichester. Uh, look into his history. Look what he did. Mm. Um, if we're going to go down the road, I would support it. Of course, I would support it in the context of doing all of that. Um, all of these grounds were named after John Mitchell in, in the context of his role as an Irish nationalist and somebody who supported the, the Irish nationalist movement. Of course, I don't take anything away. He was an anti-Semite right up to his dying days. He was pro-slavery. Um, but again, let's look at that in the context of the time and uh, that, that that was happening. Uh, and if we are going to go down that road, there'll be a lot of street names taken down in this city. Well, even in the context of, of the time, the Republican movement in Ireland was outraged by his views at the time and communicated that to him. His, um, his views were not typical of Irish republicanism by any means. That's which correct. Which was an abolitionist movement. Yes, that, that, that is correct. And there will, there will come a time when that can be changed. And even today, if any club wants to change their name, they can do so. Would by, you encourage by, them? To, yeah, by a two-thirds majority. Would you encourage them to take John Mitchell's name down? I think that would be a matter for each club. And, you know, I don't want a heading going out today. Burns calls for everything called Mitchell to be taken down. Burns calls for everything that would be Take down the racist. Inclusion. Take down the, yeah, the pro-slavery racist. Anything that would be against why is that controversial? Well, Take down any memorialization of a pro-slavery, racist, anti-Semite. How is that a controversial thing? Uh, and we will do that absolutely in the climate where Chichester Street, 
Churchill, Wellington, all of those things are removed, which are deeply offensive to our community as well. I lived in Dublin, says um, Sean, and my best friend from Cavan was a mad GAA man. I discovered when I went to his mother's funeral, I discovered he was a Protestant and an orange man. It changed nothing. Still a good friend, except when Cavan plays Antrim. He says uh, 81771 for your text uh, as well. Uh, you mentioned uh, the police and you mentioned what <clears> happened in, in the original Bloody Sunday in 1920 with the black and tans. Uh, recently, Michal Martin, uh, Michal Martin the, uh, the Taunashta, was really quite critical of the GAA. He said, you haven't done enough to encourage Catholics to join the PSNI in Northern Ireland. I'll quote him. The GAA can do more there. The GAA should be in lockstep to support Catholics going into the PSNI because we need to follow through on Patton and the principles of Patton. Is he right? Could you do more? Well, again, I was surprised when Michael Martin said that because it takes what I would call a superficial view of what the GA does. If you look at the All Ireland programme for the last five years, there is a full page advertisement for recruiting to the PSNI in English and Irish. Uh, Norman Haslett, who's our local superintendent in Newry and a good friend of mine, has been in my club for a public meeting. He's been in Cross McGlen Club. He's been in clubs in South Armagh. We facilitate that uh, because we know it's important for the PSNI to link with the community. But that's not what our core purpose is. Our core purpose is to promote Gaelic games. That's what we are there to do. We cannot be getting involved in the promotion of any organisation with regard to their HR requirements. We stand on what we are. Uh, we are uh, we are an organisation that promotes equality and diversity. But ask, uh, you know, I would say to Michal, what do you want us to do other than what we are doing at the moment? Because our, our association is run by volunteers who, every time I speak to them, and I'm still a club secretary in my own club, yeah. I know the level of work that we have to do to keep a modern club going and all of the things that we have to do. Asking us now to go to our members and nurses and to join the place and do all of, of, of the things that are around that, you know, it's asking a wee bit much of us. But I'd, I'd say this... As Civic a, responsibility, isn't it? Yeah, well, yes, as a school principal, which is where all of that this is involved, I think, at our careers convention, we have the PSNI there with a stand, dressed in their full riot gear. We do uh, a work experience from our school, Catholic school in South Armagh, and the most popular work experience place to go is the PSNI. But the GAA... Our school, on our, well, no, but our school is actually the, the Catholic school with the highest number I'm not asking of, 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 of ex-pupils. But I think that's where it belongs. President. I will say it doesn't belong in the GAA. You used to our, have, our you used to have Rule 21, school. which you got rid of eventually, but you used to have a Rule 21, which which uh, prohibited membership by people who were in the, the Crown Forces, mm -hmm. the police, the British Forces. You got rid of that as an expression of your commitment to a changing society and the need for reconciliation, yes? Yes. Same answer. Why, why should you encourage Catholics to join the PSNI? Same commitment. Civic responsibility, a commitment to a changing society and the need for reconciliation. Well, I, as GA president today, have absolutely no problem in urging Catholics to join the PSNI. That is why we allow them to advertise in our All-Ireland programmes every year. Yeah. That is why they come into our clubs routinely. You know, so w there, there is no issue with that. Tornister wants you to be more vocal in making the case for it because there is a there's a struggle going on for Catholics in Northern Ireland who may wish to join the PSNI in terms of community support. And the GAA has remarkable influence and could be very supportive in that respect. And I would say that we are within the confines of what we can do as a large sporting organisation with influence in the nationalist community. You choose what you can do. Well, I, I'm not too sure what more I can do other than what we do, because that is not our core mission. Our core mission is, and if you look at the values of our association, it's nothing to do with urging Catholics to join any type of organisation or employment. It's up to people themselves to make that choice. And we are not going to start meddling in the lives of our members 